everybody, and welcome to Two Weird Didn't Watch, the show where we make fun of movies that we have not seen based on nothing but their weird descriptions. Now, I'm Brantley. And I'm Albert. Brantley, you reading for us today? Yeah. All right, hit it. First up, we have Killer Saurus from 2015. Wow, that, that is a very 2015 sounding name. Yeah. Or like a 90s like comic villain. Oh, you mean like Killer Croc kind of thing? Kind of, or there is one that I can't remember his name, but he's basically Dinosaur Hitler. He's from an alternate timeline where dinosaurs didn't die out and they became the Third Reich. Now, we're not talking about Hitler on a dinosaur. No, a dinosaur who from... literally has the mustache and the uniform and everything, and is German. But and this is also not Devil Dinosaur. No, Devil Dinosaur is rad. <laughs> Except when he teams up with Moon Girl. Nah, he's better as the Hulk's pet. Okay. Because they literally a... fetch and it's great. He's a big like collar with a D on it. It's amazing. <laughs> Killer Saurus. Saurus. One All one word, but K and S are capitalized. I kn- there, there has to be a T-Rex looking thing on the cover of this movie, right? Uh, yeah, probably. I gonna have, I, Before we even dig into anything else, <laughs> I have to have a visual. I know this isn't going to be good for anybody else in the podcast world, but here I go. There yep, is. <laughs> yep, I was right. They could not. It couldn't be like a giant, you know... Uh, Triceratops. Triceratops with like. Oh, speaking of a Tatosaurus, they found a new uh, sauropod and they named it Brontosaurus. So, oh, I'm aware. Yes, yeah. I think that's relatively old news. I know. I just wanted you to know because okay, you were very upset by that. But by the way, the tagline for Killersaurus is part human, part dinosaur, all soldier. So it's the plot of the next Jurassic Park or Jurassic World, I should say. Yeah, although I do want to point out there isn't any human visible it's just a dinosaur i mean there's also the atlantic rim poster and the uh similar things and that monster's not in that movie so who knows fair enough there are no tentacles in that movie (laughs) when a scientist runs short of funding for his life-saving medical bioprinting research he accepts an offer of investment from a shadowy military organization okay Okay, so I guess he's, he's making a, organs. So he's like got a 3D printer for organs, right? Yeah. Like this is a real thing that actually exists. This yeah. guy's, st- I mean, it, but his it, is like magical movie tech, so it's like a hundred percent. Oh accepted. yeah, it glows. But for some reason, he runs out of funding for that perfect thing. Right, right. Or it's like one thing is directed, and it's like clearly this doesn't work. You're fired. Or it turned people into zombies or something. <laughs> Just on the DL. <laughs> It did. The transplant did work, but then they woke up and started eating people's brains. I think it's a metaphor for like the lack of meaning in our lives ah. and the fact that we're constantly seeking for knowledge without purpose. In return, he is forced to use his technology to create the ultimate battlefield weapon, a full size Tyrannosaurus Rex. If this guy has the tech to just like make a T Rex, I mean. What I'm assuming is it's not like a clone T-Rex, it's just he has lined things in the shape of a T-Rex. Right, but even so, like, this 3D printer stuff for organs is in the pretty early stages. The fact that he's like, oh man, I can't get enough VC funding to print a liver. I guess I'll have to go make a whole dinosaur out of nothing, because that's where the money is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying it doesn't make sense in the real world. <laughs> There's a asymmetrical uh, shooting, ga- uh, first person shooter battle royale game that one side plays as dinosaurs, one side plays as a hunter that basically has this plot. What is that one called? I feel like I've heard of this. It begins with a C, but I cannot remember it off the top of my head. Okay, fair enough. I just remember the trailer is a T Rex waking up and breaking out of a lab. After a horrific accident in which the dinosaur massacres his research team, the scientist shuts down the project, making him smarter than every Jurassic Park scientist. (laughs) Yeah, unlike Henry Wu, who's still, like, grabbing test tubes and running off screen to appear in the next movie. Henry Wu, who's like, I'll make a more crazy murder thing. What was the big problem with that one? It was too big. I'll make it fit inside doors. (laughs) However, his investors demand results, and it can only be a matter of time before the deadly T-Rex is unleashed upon the world. I enjoy the idea of these uh, shadowy military organizations as investors, right? Like, they're on their (laughs) earnings call. They just want their dinosaurs, man. In the third quarter of this uh, 
this fiscal year, we created a killer Saurus that uh, destroyed several people. The uh, research is ongoing. There were no survivors. Profits are up. <laughs> <laughs> we filmed it and called it Jurassic Park. <laughs> I'm on to you, government. We just uploaded it to Amazon. <laughs> Turns out they're very lax about their quality standards. <laughs> it's a true secret between every found footage movie. Yep. It's all real, but it's just a government experiment. What's next? Up next, we have Bug. Bug! From 1975. I like this. So not the one you might be thinking of. I don't... Okay, no. So, oh, yeah, so I have... There's one with Michael Shannon. Mm-hmm. Not that one, because yeah, he one was. They... A, if he was born in 1975, he was a wee lad. <laughs> oh, wee babe, <laughs> still killing it though, because <laughs> he's Michael Shannon. An earthquake releases a bunch of mutant cockroaches that can create fire by rubbing their cirrus together. All right, cirrus are the little like kind of antenna on the back of bugs. My favorite Game of Thrones character. Yeah, they rub it... two of them together and mix fire because it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> good one um, uh, it wasn't <laughs> cockroaches are a good uh, and I think underused movie villain just as the sort of like you know it, it's it's similar to the rats like, like Willard I think is a movie there's I haven't Willard seen Willard for the rats and there's one that's like a kind of like Willard but with roaches like a dude's house getting infested with roaches but not this one no at one point they do a CGI song and answer Okay. It's is that like something bizarre. that happens in real life or is he having a mental breakdown? I haven't seen the movie. I've just seen the song and dance number and it's bizarre. Okay. So it's like our Spider's Man concept, essentially, but with roaches? Or are all the roaches individually dancing? They're all dancing. It's like the uh, the dance scene in Flubber. I was just going there in my head, Brantley. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, I'm tracking. It's about so, that same quality of CG2. So we have... 1970s, by the way, no CG that's possible. Maybe you can have some hand animated cockroaches, but I assuming mostly we're dealing with puppets practical... or like actual roaches. Yeah, yeah, and then they, I guess, they can do an effect of fire over that. This is uh, this is interesting. Or it's the 70s, so they may have burned actual roaches. Or well, yes, that too. Eventually, most of the bugs die because they cannot survive in the low air pressure on the Earth's surface. What? So there's less air pressure on the surface than under the ground. It's like the ocean depths. <laughs> it's like we bring up like a uh, anglerfish to the surface; it just kind of melts. I mean, okay. Well, I guess more a blobfish than angel anglerfish. I've never heard of anybody going like down into a cave and being, "Oh man, I can't handle the pressure down in this cave because of the the air pressure." Like that's not how caves work. You don't. You can't <laughs> get that far down until you're lava. Before you're lava, it's a really deep pocket, man. I guess also they are breathing fire, so maybe they're lava roaches. Lava roaches. Is that the end of that, or is there more there? There's more. Okay, I thought we were just like, and that was the end, just like in uh, the War of the Worlds. They had a problem with their atmosphere and died. The hubris of man, the end. But a scientist, Professor James Parmeter, keeps one alive in a pressure chamber. <sighs> Because they so, make fire. This is the reverse of the other guy. The other guy was like, oh, man. It's like, no, this is bad. This is bad. I should have known it was bad because it, we called it Killer Saurus. I made one of the most powerful apex predators the world's ever seen, and then people died. So, yeah, I'm good. I'm going to shut this project down. Uh, but this guy's like, cockroaches that breathe fire. I must know more. I mean, it's one. It's in a pressure chamber. It's nothing about fire. What he does next is the dumb part. Okay. He successfully breeds the mutant cockroach with a modern cockroach, creating a brig of intelligent, flying super cockroaches that can make fire. You know, the intelligent part is kind of where they lost me. Yeah, it's, it's smart out of nowhere. Were the, were the ones underground smart? I mean, it's not... I don't know. Okay, right. We haven't seen it. They don't discuss that. It's just they die from... Do they pop, do you think? Or do they just like... Not enough air and die. I think they probably just get sluggish, right? Yeah, it depends and then on the budget. Kind of <laughs> flop on the ground a little bit. There's a real life uh, version of this happening basically right now. By the way, they are breeding a special breed of mosquitoes that they want to spread infertility in Africa, but they're not stupid. So 
their plan to stop this from going wrong if they've messed up the weird mutation that they're trying to do is that they have them in Italy in a region where the like the mosquitoes just can't live right out in the climate that they have in Italy. So they have the, obviously they have them in sort of like negative pressure lab and all this other stuff. But even if the lab blows up and all these mosquitoes escape, they're still just out in Italy where they're not cool. And so die. they've learned their mistake from the killer bees. I guess. Was that how the killer bees came about where they were in a lab and they're like, oops, they got out. The plan was European honeybees make really good honey. Yeah. But they're very temperature fragile. African honeybees really tough on, you know, extreme temperatures don't make great honey. So they bred them together and they made super strong murder bees that then escaped the lab. How much honey did they make though? <laughs> I don't know. All Nobody know, ever talks about the massive amounts of honey because they can't from check because the they murder everyone. <laughs> With normal bees, if you get like right up on the hive, they'll send like probably thirty or forty bees to chase you away for about you know like twenty feet. Killer bees, if you get within twenty feet of the hive, will send all of them to hunt you down for about a mile. I'm looking it up now. I see that. Apparently, yes, they can make killer bee honey. I mean, and you can still specifically bees. buy it. They also have a, apparently particular advantages because they're so aggressive. They actually pollinate more than regular bees. Yeah. So, win for science. You decide. I, I think it's called breaking even. Okay. Unless you think there's too many people, in which case it is a solid win. <laughs> Maybe it's finding the good side of a bad situation. Ah. What do we got next? Up next, we have Dinosaur Activity from 2008. Uh, Couldn't they, like, stick a saurus on the end of a word or, like... Well, this isn't in the description, but this has been described as paranormal activity meets dinosaurs. Oh. Hence the activity part. Oh, okay. Man, I feel old now. Paranormal Activity came out before 2008? It's an old series, man. Yeah, I know they have had like five of them, but I thought they kind of came out once a year and it was only like in 2012. Old Man Albert, feeling old. Eight rolls of badly damaged 16mm film have revealed one of the most bizarre cover-ups in the annals of cryptozoology. I should have known. Yes, Paranormal Activity, it's a found footage. Oh, no, no, I know. Okay, eight millimeter though? 16mm, sir. I'm sorry, 16mm, wow. This isn't super eight. (laughs) There, <laughs> how, when is this supposed to be set? I don't remember, and I don't have that Because I, you know that it's not actually going to be shot on 16 millimeter. I mean, film. they found it. It's going to be shot on, like, 2008 digital cameras that these people were able to afford, and then transposed with terrible scratchy effects over the, the film. That's how, that's how it has to be. Yeah, probably. I would, I, I, I know, if you're listening to this and you've seen this, if you're yelling, no, they definitely use... I'm, I'll be happy to be proven wrong if... Probably when I see this, actually, because this sounds delightful just from the title. But <laughs> that's how I'm seeing this, apparently. I've yeah. seen a lot of these. I know how this goes. Suppressed from the public for many years, the discovery footage, discovered footage shows how a quiet fishing weekend with friends turned into a savage fight for survival of strange dinosaur-like creatures are discovered. Dinosaur-like creatures. They're not saying they were dinosaurs. They're just raptors. They just found some big lizards. (laughs) Dude, these are just big lizards. (sighs) Go ahead, Brantley. Is there more? That's the last movie I have. Okay. Uh, We're throwing (laughs) this one in at the end. I'm reading this one because Brantley is out of delightful bug movies. This is a movie from 1978 called The Bees. They're in my eyes. Yes, okay. Yes, uh, which, by the way, I get, uh, Killer Bees apparently have been a thing for a while now. When mm-hmm. did that thing break out? Because this was made in 1978. Was this sort of right when that was a big deal? And... No, because they broke out in Argentina, so America wouldn't have cared for a while. Well, it might have been a news story that people are like, oh, I'm reading about this. but like... Maybe. Oh, yeah, they, they broke out in Brazil in 1956 and arrived in North America in 1985. So they were on their way at this point. Yeah. Corporate smuggling of South American killer bees into the United States. Man, there's just so many questions there. Right, like, 
So many. Earlier, we did read about these guys that they could produce honey and that they were good for pollination. I mean, they're still bees. But the question is, like, were these the remainder bees that were still in the lab? And it's like, we'll take them and use them to make honey. And then also, like, the is there now. that much market for honey? Honey is a really good product, man. It's good. It doesn't go bad. It doesn't. That's <laughs> the thing, though, right? Like, they're, like once you've bought a, you know, a big bottle of honey, you're good for basically five years. Unless you put it in your tea. I you guess. Like, every day like I do. Honey tea is awesome. Even then, like, I don't buy sweetener that often. You know, if I'm putting stuff in my like coffee, I, I have the little sweetener packets. I only have to buy one of those once every three or four months. It's not a huge consumer. Yeah, but honey, you can also put it on toast, on pancakes, and place a syrup. I just put syrup on there. I know, but you can put honey in it's stand, and it's really, really good. <laughs> and then your pancakes will never go bad. Also, just the uh, the concept of corporate smuggling. Like, I'm sure it's a thing, but that's just imports. It's illegal imports. They didn't pay taxes. I guess. Is that what it was about? They, these were non-taxed bees. There was a big tariff on bees at the time. And I mean, like, they're murder bees, so probably. <laughs> President, <laughs> President Jimmy Carter was like, America's bee farmers must be protected. Carter versus the bees. <laughs> these cheap Chinese bees are driving down American bee prices. Okay. <laughs> This this is my uh, Jimmy Carter as Donald Trump bit. Oh, yeah? Famous in the podcast. Everybody knows it. If you oh. haven't heard it before, you should go back and listen to all 110 episodes we've done before now. I'm and not going to hear that, it a lot I of times. I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was there for most of those. <clears throat> anyway, so they smuggle these killer bees uh, into the United States, which results in huge swarms terrorizing the Northern Hemisphere. Yeah, that's accurate. Terrorizing, I wouldn't say that so much, but I do remember, like, back in the 90s, when the bees started making it to New York, there were a bunch of, like, I remember, like, documentaries and videos about, like, how dangerous they were. I And, like, school and stuff. I remember hearing about it. The thing is, I never did see one. It's because we don't live in Texas. Is that, they're just in Texas? They're in Texas and more the western area. I, I, I don't know if it's, like, a real, like, how many people have died to killer bees? In America, let's go with that. Stings from Africanized bees kill on average one or two people per year. Yeah. According to the Wichita Falls, Texas or Times Records News, Times Record News. I forget. I don't know which one is which. But one or two per year. Like that's by killer bees in the U.S. They're they're behind sharks. Which is behind lightning. Which is behind deer. <laughs> so, you know. I'm not afraid, Brantley. You and I should bet some be of those, afraid. Also, I bet a lot of those people were probably allergic to bees anyway and would have died if a regular bee stung them. Yeah. So, uh, the, the they've brought them in the United States. A small team of scientists work desperately. You know, if there's giant swarms terrorizing the country, I figured, you know. Nope. More than small. No. Nope. Then again, Japan only made a small one to fight Shin Everybody Godzilla, else is so. working on opiates at this point, Brantley. Oh, uh, that's for his 70s. <laughs> They're going to build a non-addictive painkiller that everybody can take lots and lots of and never have any downside. Just these these four or five guys are like, what about, about the bees? Yeah, and they're like, no! <laughs> Small team of scientists work desperately to destroy the threat. But the bees soon mutate into, get this, Brantley, uh -huh. a super intelligent species that threatens the world. I like how you picked the one bee movie that is... Also in line with the other bug movie we had this episode. <laughs> that was sort of what drew me in. Breed like, with a regular regular, uh, regular one, and they just get super smart. Definitely have to do that one. There is... I, I, we can't do this one because I've seen it, Brantley, but there's another intelligent bug movie called Phase 4 that I saw just sort of... I think I might have seen that on Sci-Fi Channel back when. It's a weird movie. It's from 1974. And, like, the ants build this giant... A specific shape so there's this giant like this big old block out in the desert or maybe it's a prism i forget at one point they align all of the grains of sand so that it's actually burning out the people who are sort of investigating the doodad mm -hmm. weird movie 
Weird movie. Fascinating though. Recommend it. Oh yeah, here's the pictures. They've like they have all these giant like uh, they look like yeah pillars like uh, ant sized sky- skyscrapers, right? But they're very regular, yeah. and they find these out in the desert, and they're like something's wrong with these ants. <laughs> very cool. Somebody needs to remake that. Like David Lynch needs to. I saw one movie about intelligent ants that was on an island, and it was like the whole colony had like a one hive intelligence, like proper intelligence, right? And the ants were, you know, of course, killing people because horror movie on the Sci-Fi Channel. And eventually, the uh, leads make their way into where the nest is. Mm-hmm. And it's this big mass of ants by the ceiling, and it like lights up with electricity and makes shapes to communicate with them. Okay. And so they're trying to like negotiate with the ants, trying to be like you you can have this part of the island. The ants just like erase the drawing they made and drew it to where the humans only have like the small corner. It's like no, we were here first. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's good stuff, but not part of the episode proper because we have seen those apparently. Yeah. That'll do it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you like this, uh, you should tell a friend about us. We'd for sure appreciate you spreading the word. And we will see you guys next week with another episode of Too Weird Didn't Watch. Uh, Maybe next week. Well, this one will probably be next week. Sometimes we apologize. We've had a little bit of an irregular release schedule, mostly due to me being sick. Also me. Yeah, Brentley was sick first, and then it was me, and we both can take some of the blame. But we appreciate you guys listening. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.